What's going on guys? Uh, welcome to your 30th Java tutorial for game applets. And as you can see, we have our platforms being animated. We're actually using a sprite sheet uh, to get this animation. And that's what we're going to you know, work towards in probably the next couple tutorials, uh, maybe three. Um, but, you know, let's jump into it. So, uh, what we're going to do first is obviously create our sprite sheet. And I'm not an expert at this, so... Um, but this is what my image looks like. Let me try and resize it here. All right, well anyways, uh, this is the size of my image. It's 120 pixels by 120 pixels. Um, and as you can see, I have three different images of our platform. I tried to make it look a little bit animated if we just kind of loop through all three of these. It looks like arrow pointing up because again, our ball shoots through the bottom and shoots up. So I don't know, uh, just try to create a little you know, sprite there. But um, make an image somewhat like this. Try to get the spacing perfectly. Otherwise, you know, when we cut this in Java and, uh, you know, make it animated, it might not look perfect. So try and, you know, create one image that's 120 by 40 and then, you know, copy that, save it, and then create another image, uh, you know, 120 by 40. Just make it look a little bit animated. Copy that, paste it and then make your third image 120 by 120 and paste your first image up there and then your second image and then finally create your last image or your third image and that's how we're gonna get that animation we're just gonna cycle through the same PNG file or ping file and just cut out different areas as we update um, our platform class alright so let's jump into our platform class and try and get started here and if you guys tried this already, you might have, you know, we're just going to try it. We're going to create an image called plat for platform. And we're also going to create a URL. Remember, we need that URL. Um, so we're going to say URL, URL. So there we go. We're going to at least try. So within our constructor, I deleted the other constructor. We have the default constructor because I believe we only call this method anyways, or this constructor. So. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to try and set up our URL. So we're going to say URL is get document uh, base. And as you can see, this method doesn't work because this get do document base, and when we use it in our starting point class, was essentially saying this, referring to the applet class uh, where we can actually get the document base. So we have our first problem here. We can't set up our URL and then we can't load our image if our URL isn't set up. So that's a problem. We could, you know, change your constructor where we pass in the information from the starting point class, and then we say, uh, you know, starting point dot uh, get document base or whatever. You know, we could set something up like that. But uh, instead, what we're going to do is we're going to just create a class for all of our resources, get them all loaded, all of our pictures that we want, um, at least from here on out. So we're just going to create a new class, and we're going to call this class uh, picture, so, pictures, and there we go. So within our pictures class, we want to have a constructor, um, and we are actually going to pass in the information from the applet. So we're going to say starting point, and uh, inf and we're just going to get the applet information, and then what we're going to do is we're going to set up some variables. So we're going to say uh, we want an image. And we're going to call this image uh, platform. And we also want an image ball as well, eventually. And also, you know, all of our other images that we want to set up for our items flying across. But as for now, we'll just set up and mainly focus on our platform. And what else do we want to have? We want to have a URL. Uh, this is going to be URL. Um, what else? Yeah, that's pretty good for now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go within our constructor here and we're going to set up our URL. Again, we're doing, going to do this within a try and catch and just to save some time, I'm just going to paste the code here. So again, all we're doing is we're setting up our URL, getting the information that we get passed in here, and we're saying get base document. Then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up our uh, platform. So we're going to say our platform image, again, is equal to... Uh, the SP, well, if you guys uh, remember from last tutorial, we said get image, and then we said, uh, you know, the base URL, or the base URL, 
and so we're just going to refer to our URL and then we're just going to refer to the string which is images forward slash uh, platform for me after you guys save your ping in there and uh, we're getting an error because again this get image is coming from the information of our applet so we're just going to say sp.get image and there we go we've set up our platform image um, nice and easily so now when we go back after we save everything and we go back to our platform class what we want to do is we want to set our platform class image to be whatever image is in our pictures class so let's try and set that up so we're going to say platform is equal to uh, pictures dot and we can't refer to it we want to say pictures dot platform but we can't refer to it right now because you know that we can't refer to a class information unless if a variable is static so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our pictures class and make this these images uh, be static so we save that after our constructor gets called you know our platform gets set up for us our platform image and then we go into our platform class and we can just refer to the picture class and since it's a static variable we can just say hey well, this is what we want for our platform so now we can access all this information pretty easily if they're static variables I know we went through static in the previous Java series but this is kinda of seen in action we just have to make sure we don't change this platform variable anywhere else throughout our game in any other classes uh, we can just refer to it so we don't mess up you know our game but anyways that's how we do that so that's pretty neat so let's go back try and paint you know or draw our image so we're gonna go down to our paint method of our whoa wrong class sorry in our in our platform class we're gonna go down to our paint method and we're just gonna paint after our blue square um, because we want to make sure we're in the same kind of area as our blue square because that's where a collision happens so we're just gonna say g dot draw image whoops and instead of saying well actually let's just uh, you know stick with the one we're familiar with for now image xy and image observer so for image we're gonna refer to the image that we set up for this class platform or plat and for x and y values it's going to be that and then last time we said this and the image observer is something that comes from the applet class and since our starting point class extends the applet class it's pretty much like an applet so we can refer to the this variable but again since we're in the platform class we can't do that simple fix let's go into our pictures folder and all we're going to do is we're going to set up a static uh, starting point variable which is pretty much like our applet and we're gonna call this SP as well and again that's why we have this constructor taking in the starting point object um, well I guess we need it for here as well but what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up this SP for a class SP or static SP to be equal to whatever is being passed in so now we have the same information that our games running on our applet information uh, referring through this static variable SP so now what we can do is save this and go back to our platform class and instead of saying this we can say pictures we probably should have labeled that class resources but we're gonna say pictures.sp and as you can see this is you know this way of doing things is a lot more organized and you know we save more time so uh, we should have probably set up this resources class or this pictures class a long time ago so we could refer to variables that are static like our gravity instead of having our gravity in our ball class uh, we could have added our gravity in here and then changed it when we needed to uh, stuff like that so um, you know that's how that works static and action there let's save this and run it see what we have so far and uh, the first thing that you notice obviously is we don't have our image and the reason that's happening is because we can't get the information from our uh, pictures class our starting point information here obviously all of this information within our picture class means absolutely nothing right now until we call the constructor so we're gonna to go to our starting point class and uh, within our initialize method we're just gonna call that constructor real quickly so we could instead of setting up here you know we could have set up our city image in our pictures class but who cares right now so all we're gonna do is we're gonna trigger uh, that information within the constructor uh, we aren't ever going to use this variable we're just triggering 
you know the setup so all those static variables mean something so we're gonna say pictures P equals new pictures whoops pictures and we're gonna pass in the information of this class again the starting point information so all we're doing is uh, you know setting this up like I said we aren't ever gonna use P dot something uh, we're just triggering our uh, constructor so let's save this and run it and hopefully we get something a little bit different uh, we'll get into the actual you know sprite sheet of things in the next tutorial where we actually animate it but we do get the information from uh, our resource folder and uh, there we go I mean uh, that's pretty much all we have time for in today's tutorial uh, like I said we'll get into the sprite sheet stuff and animation and the next couple tutorials so uh, thanks again for watching guys and I'll catch you later